Today I thought I'd talk a little bit more about Fast Track for a permanent layout and get into something that I neglected to mention uh, in my previous videos. Uh, Fast Track is notorious for being absolutely the noisiest track system in old gauge, if not any gauge, and I won't disagree with that. When I first started this layout, I had originally laid out some fast track on the bare bench work and tested out some of the TMCC trains that I had. And the noise was so incredible. It was like rolling pull cues on a wood floor. And it was so bad, I was having second thoughts about even continuing on with the layout. And I thought about it and I decided, well, I'll try something. So I found this half inch pink foam a lot of folks are familiar with it it's not a noise deadener it's an insulator but i wanted to put something between the track and the layout and i found out it cuts the noise quite a bit it's not a sound deadener home of is probably a better option uh, as well as some other uh, uh, materials that are designed to be sound deadeners and homes and, and apartments and things like that but i tried that work for me uh, once you add the ballast and the rest of the scenery it begins to quiet the layout down even further plus i run at realistic speeds is, that i feel and if you've seen many of my videos there's not too much noise you're always going to have some noise metal wheels on metal track i mean you're not going to have a whisper quiet layout real trains aren't totally quiet the other nice thing about it is uh, it allows you to cut recesses into the layout to sync accessories right into your layout to make things look a little better. Here's the MTH switch tower. Uh, if we go over here, I have the Lionel ice rink. That's kind of sunk into the layout. I don't know how well you can see it. And at the same time, it also allows you to cut features into your layout. I put this little creek in here that goes to the ice rink. Uh, here's the... Uh, uh, Christmas tree lot that's flush into the layout. Uh, we'll take a walk over to the far end and you can see where I added the uh, operating water tower. That's flush into the layout and then we'll go around and my latest addition is the uh, MTH operating gate man and, and that's that's flush. Most of the accessory bases are a half inch or so which is what the pink foam is. So and you can sink them in, and then if you put some scenery there, uh, I find it looks a little better, and it's an easy thing to do. Uh, the other thing is it also allows you to make uh, some areas of the track look like secondary track where the track is nearly flush with ground level, like here in my small service yard area. Uh, you put the pink foam between the tracks. I use a uh, Woodland Scenics plaster to butt up to the side of the plastic road bed to fill in the gap that you get. And it allows you to make a flush, non-elevated type of rail um, track appearance, you know, like you would see in a yard or a siding or, or whatever. So it works out nice for that. Because if I go back over here to a little set up here the half inch foam is slightly taller than the fast track road bed it comes in somewhere between the road bed and the rail so when you put it in here put up against there and then fill this area in with some woodland scenics plaster um, and then do your ballast and then put your scenery here it, i mean it's not perfect but it looks pretty good. I think it looks better than, than not doing it. So that's an easy tip. And I normally just glue the pink foam down, remove, usually it comes with a plastic covering on one side, remove that. And I normally glue that directly to the layout with hot glue because it's fast. And then you can start building on it right away. And uh, the only thing I might have done differently is I might have gone with something thicker. But I would recommend some kind of a noise reduction uh, material whether it's carpeting you know depending on what kind of layout you're doing in post-war if you want to do carpeting or anything and like i said once you ballast if you're doing a scenery setup like i have once you add ballast and start adding the scenery 
it quiets things down even more. Uh, if you look over here, I actually cut little ditches in. Probably hard to see. I cut little ditches into the pink foam here in front of the icing station. So, you know, it allows you to add other little features. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about, I'm sure someone has covered this somewhere, but it, it, it added an impression on me. Uh, someone recommended painting the driver tires on steamers black. And Lionel sells them. They all come uh, nickel colored. And I never thought much of it. And But what, every time I saw an MTH engine, I'm like, why does it, something looks different about that? And it's just a matter of a fine paintbrush. And I use some Model Master paint. I believe they took over Engine Black Flat. I believe they're the new replacement for Floquil. I believe Floquil no longer exists. I'm not a big prototypical painter guy or whatever. This is just a little detail that anybody can do. Uh, if you got a set of rollers, you can run the train on the rollers and hold your brush up to the rim. You also want to get the axle center. In my case, I didn't have rollers. did the old-fashioned way. Just brush what I could see carefully, move the locomotive forward to get at the rest of the rim, and repeat the process. And this, by far, little minor thing, uh, to me, adds so much to the appearance of the locomotive. Uh I've done everything I own. Every locomotive, if it's something new, I'll run it for a little while, make sure there's no issues with it. But everything I own, I've uh, done the wheels on. If you go back in some of my older videos, you can see the Mohawk before the rims, and you can see the later ones where I paint. It just, it's a little detail. Like I said, I'm not Mr. Three Rail Scale guy. I like something fairly real, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm somewhere in between. You know, a fun layout and a real layout, but it just really enhances the appearance of the locomotive. It takes it, it something so minor makes a big step away from a kind of toyish model, even though these are scale models, but it really, it makes a big step. It just makes the locomotive look more realistic, in my opinion, such a minor detail that I, as soon as I did one, I turned around and did them all. And I recommend if, if you like something like that, it's easy enough to do. Uh, if you get a little bit on the spokes or whatever, not a big deal. You'll never see it. But that's the other tip I have for today. Yeah, I just, that little minor thing, and I'm not a guy that weathers or counts rivets, but it just really makes those wheels look a whole lot better. So that's pretty much my video for today and my tips that I have. And, uh, Thanks for all the kind comments from everybody, and uh, hopefully I'll uh, try and get some more videos in the future of trains running and any other way I can help out. And anybody that has a question, feel free to throw one up in the comments section or whatever. Uh, have a great weekend.